So luckily for me, uh, I, this topic is, is pretty well documented uh, about the migration or transition from a, a 2D product like an AutoCAD or there's others out there to SolidWorks and, and what it takes and how it affects your business. So my goal today is to kind of present some of that information. I'm assuming most of you are either just new to SolidWorks or still using some 2D tools in your everyday life and, and are kind of looking for some pointers as to maybe how to get the organization to move forward or how to make an ROI as to, to why uh, to go forward. So my name's Kevin Holbrook. Uh, I'm, I've been with CAD Dimensions about 12 years, so I was uh, one of the early adopters of SolidWorks. So I've seen uh, over the years uh, a lot of companies transition from the 2D world to the 3D world. A couple of housekeeping issues before we move forward. If you have any questions, uh, as we go through the presentation, I'll probably take them at the end, uh, but please put them in the questions section of the GoToWebinar window, and uh, we'll, we'll kind of follow up with those. If you put them in chat, I won't be able to answer those uh, or won't answer those, so they should be in the questions section. So before we get started, uh, I have a few just, just general questions uh, about uh, 2D to 3D. So, first one here, if you just answer the poll here, you know, what describes a majority of your current modeling for the group that we have online? Are, are you doing 2D? Are you doing 3D? Uh, are you doing both? Okay, so, so we definitely have got a 2D group here. I'll go ahead and let everyone... Uh, vote here and I'll just share that with you just so you can see what we're looking at. Most of you online are, are still uh, doing a majority of 2D work which is uh, kind of important to this presentation here. So that being said, what has prevented you from adopting this 3D world already? I mean there's a lot of uh, you know things out there, reasons that people make as to to why not to adopt 3D or issues within the process or environment. Um, what kind of things have prevented you from moving forward uh, with 3D? Because that's kind of what our presentation's about today is dispelling a few of these myths about, uh, you know, th these, uh, these issues. Give a few more seconds to vote. All right, I'm going to go ahead and close and share that information. So we've kind of hit on a bunch of them, right? So you know, a lot of people say, you know, my process works. I can draw in 2D. We can still manufacture our parts and, and get things out the door, no problem. You know, some people think the 3D is an overkill for product lines. We're going to talk today of why that may not be the case. Software costs, what you have to really look at is is the cost of not using 3D or what benefits you have to putting 3D within the uh, process. Uh, lack of resources, that's partially where CAD dimensions come into play. Uh, also training your engineers on that as well. One more poll before we get, get going. When you talk about your organizations, I mean, you guys are under pressure daily uh, to do things better. I mean, in your current businesses, uh, what do you feel, and here's a few of them, if any of these things are, are a current pressure within your organization? You know, things like uh, shorten your product development cycle, increase reliability, getting more complex products, customers coming to you saying, hey, you know what, I need you to have 3D parts, 3D assemblies. So I'll give you a few seconds to go ahead and vote on that. All right, I'll go ahead and share that information with you as well. 
kind of surprised that uh, only 11% of you have uh, reduced product development budgets. So it means the budgets are still there uh, to develop better products. You're still putting money into R&D, uh, but you're being required to shorten your development cycle, cycles, increase quality and reliability, inc increase your complexity, and your customers want 3D. So let's go ahead and get into our presentation. What I want to talk about today, uh, on top of showing some of the SOLIDWORKS tools that you can take advantage of, first off, I want to talk about what best-in-class companies are doing as it pertains to making the transition from 2D to 3D. Talk about why 3D solids. And then I'm going to go through a whole list of challenges. These are challenges you may not recognize, but they're there. They're challenges that you have in 2D that your entire business is going through currently that we can overcome by using tools within 3D. In that section, I'm going to go through and probably show you all sorts of different tools in, in the SOLIDWORKS family to, to affect those areas of the business. We also, at the end, we want to have a plan. Okay, If, if you want to be at 3D and you see the benefit of overcoming these challenges, do we have a plan going forward and how to create that successful plan? Then we'll summarize and we'll go ahead and move forward from there. So the why 3D solids is, is very simple. Uh, the statement is accurate. We, we're, we've got 12, 15 years of moving organizations from 2D. And, and the reality of it is using SOLIDWORKS to design accelerates how that informa information moves throughout your entire cycle and throughout the business from sales, marketing, manufacturing, creating prototypes, working with customers and vendors. It's a fact that having a solid model and using SOLIDWORKS accelerates that process thus in turn shortening your product development cycle because you're able to move information better within your business. Okay, so that's kind of our theme to the presentation today. SOLIDWORKS is going to accelerate that throughout your organization. Now we want to start out just introducing you to some basic tools that you may not be aware of inside of SOLIDWORKS that will help you in the transition. Some of you may have already started to make that transition. Some of you uh, are, are looking forward to maybe making a transition like that. First of all, uh, there are some tools inside of SOLIDWORKS that will help you to move from AutoCAD to help you make the terminology jump a lot easier, the concepts uh, that you would have in 2D a lot easier. And they've brought along some of the tools right along with it, like Grid and Snap. I also want to show you that your 2D data that you have today isn't completely useless when you decide to go to 3D. How do we take that 2D and bring it into 3D? Can we get 100% of it? Can we get 90% of it? I, maybe I don't have to create everything from scratch if I want it in 3D. You know, even having the ability to just copy and paste from AutoCAD or your 2D tool. On top of that, you can be provided a tool for free that will allow you to maintain your existing 2D data. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look for a moment. So we're inside of SOLIDWORKS 2013 at this point. Maybe some of you, it may be your first look at the tool. But under the Help menu, if you're a 2D user coming forward, this is the first place I would go. There's an entire document put together titled Moving from 2D to 3D. Now, the great thing about uh, if you're coming from the AutoCAD side of things is it really does help you bridge the gap in, as to thought process. For instance, you know, in a 2D system, they're called drawings. What do we call them in SOLIDWORKS? sketching versus drawing, just making the, the transition from file types in one system to the other and kind of helping you overcome that initial hump, which is, hey, you call it array, I call it pattern. On top of that, it has a user interface map uh, that allows you to you know, look at the different types of commands just uh, 
find it here. Uh, so for instance, here's your AutoCAD toolbar, standard toolbar. Here's the, the feature that you're looking for inside of SOLIDWORKS. Now, a, a lot of this is it's just saying, okay, use new or open or save. Let's use something a little more, more complex. We'll go to uh, layers for a moment. So if I want uh, to use layers inside of SOLIDWORKS, which is very similar, almost exactly like what we do in AutoCAD, uh, I have to get to the layer property toolbar. Let me just minimize this for a moment. This is how easy this is for you. Maybe you can't see the icon, but you know now what the command is. If I just type in layer in my command search, the system's going to automatically bring up anything that's related or has that terminology in the command and allow me to activate it. So using this, this help function is going to help you to find the command and using the search is going to get you there. So uh, I recommend if you're, first thing you're going to do when you get the software installed is to start reviewing this moving from 2D to 3D. Uh, feature inside of SOLIDWORKS will help you make the transition. Now another thing that we want to uh, kind of focus on is a little bit more of uh, what what the software has brought with it over the years. 2D users were always comfortable with this whole grid environment and snapping to grids. If I invoke particular commands like my line command you were used to in the 2D world having this snapping environment. They brought forward in SOLIDWORKS uh, snaps so that you can activate snaps uh, like a midpoint or quadrant snap to, to give you that same feel, that look and feel of, of drawing inside of the 3D tool uh, to help you kind of move forward uh, with those as well. So something you're most likely going to take advantage of. Now I also want to bring up the point that your data is not lost coming from 2D. So if I were to decide that I want to move things forward with a product that was necessarily a 2D file prior, I can go ahead and open that directly inside of SOLIDWORKS. We can open DXF DWGs directly, and we have choices as to what we want to do with these files once we bring them in. We can actually just embed them as DXF DWG inside of SOLIDWORKS drawing, and they're linked to the original. So if the original's uh, DXF or DWG changes, it changes inside of SOLIDWORKS. Okay, it just kind of brings it into that environment. But let's say you did want to create it in 3D. We have the ability to actually bring it into SOLIDWORKS as a part with the intention that we're going to go ahead and turn this into a 3D model. It understands all the layers. All throughout the SOLIDWORKS process, it understands layers. So I can, at this point, decide to come in here and turn off the things that I don't need for my in import. In this case, my title block, my text, my dimensions. I can set the units of the imported file, is it millimeters? As I work through this, one of the things and, and challenges you have with the 2D product is making sure that you have designed it such that the endpoints are actually touching each other. I mean, there's cases where you might have leave, left a very, very small gap. Well, SOLIDWORKS understands that, has the ability to merge overlapping entities and repair and uh, merge points that are closer than a certain size. Okay, so now we bring this into SOLIDWORKS and you can see the tools that I need pop up directly for me within the interface and it's brought forward all the sketch geometry that we had in the, in the original 2D file. But here's the great thing, if you ever heard of the glass box approach, I can go ahead and take the geometry, tell the software, this is my front view. This here, this is my right view. And it's going to start to fold the views over on top of each other. Okay, I'm just going to dock this off to the side for me for a second. Now what I have is, is a glass box where I now have three views. All I have to do is line those views up 
using the tools provided. I go ahead and uh, align those so that they're lined up. Okay, everything looks good. And now I can start to use that to create a 3D solid. Very simply, I tell the software what pieces I want to use, how big it's going to be. Well, I know that this thing is actually starting here, and it ends here. So I'm using the existing sketches to help me to create the geometry. Well, obviously, that's not the profile from the top, so I'll go ahead and use the top to do the same thing. I'll use the profile to actually cut away material, tell the software which areas to cut away, which happens to be just two small slots in that. Well, I have holes on the side here, and again, I'm just using pieces of what you've already done in 2D to give me my 3D model. Go ahead and use this. We know that this goes up to this point, and I can go ahead and create the cutouts as needed. If you haven't seen this process before, it's quite interesting. Uh, you know, the whole concept should bring to mind, hey, you know what, can I get 70% of my model, 80% of my model, or even 100% of my model in 3D by just performing this type of operation? Okay, so something that you can use going forward. Now, mentioned a little bit uh, about a product called DraftSight. If you go to the website, www.draftsight.com, you will find the ability to download a free DWG-based tool from SOLIDWORKS. Now, this is has a very particular fit within your organization if you do move forward with 3D, because there will be p points where you need to make design changes that are so simple that you don't need to create a 3D model to make the change. Maybe you just need to stretch a line, change a dimension, and then give it to manufacturing. It's understood that sometimes those changes aren't necessary or aren't required to go into 3D, but you don't want to have to maintain a 2D tool to do so. So DraftSite will allow you to download for free and maintain your existing 2D data that you've decided not to bring in 3D in a 2D tool. Another great thing about this is it gets updated frequently so you can open up newer versions of AutoCAD 2010, 2012, or back to DOS-based version, versions of AutoCAD files as well. So some of your organizations are limited by the version of AutoCAD that you're using. Maybe you're not on maintenance. Well, this tool right now is going to give you some extra capabilities either with your vendors or internally. Now, another benefit to having these types of tools is I can take the existing data out of one tool, copy and paste directly into SOLIDWORKS. So instead of doing that import, I could come in here and paste the information directly into SOLIDWORKS. Maybe I want to move that closer to my origin here, and then I could go ahead and actually extrude that to some thickness very easily. But I'm able to reuse that data. Again, it's, it's you know, you think legacy data, you don't want to think that it's bad data. It's good data. We need to be able to use it, and this system's going to allow us uh, to go ahead and do that. On top of that, uh, draft site, uh, is DWG based, it, it'll feel a lot like using AutoCAD. So if I type in zoom, extents, you know, those those commands will all work. This interface very similar uh, in nature to what AutoCAD is, your command lines. Uh, you're figuring this is right around uh, a year behind the latest version of AutoCAD typically. They're reverse engineering a lot of the new AutoCAD functions. But I recommend you give this a try. Uh, take a look and see, see how this might help you uh, moving forward. So just some tools to kind of aid in the transition moving forward. Now I want to kind of get into real life challenges that 
most of your organizations are feeling today that you may not feel are challenges. There's the way of life inside of an organization using a 2D tool. But a lot of these challenges can be resolved by going to 3D, by using SolidWorks. You're going to have this choice going forward. And my hope is that after this presentation, you're going to be able to go back to your companies and say, you know what? If we go to 3D, this is where the area that it's going to help us going forward. So let's start talking about uh, some of these challenges. You know, the, fir the first challenge uh, really has to do with your engineer's imagination. When you capture that creativity, that design intent with 2D drawings, your engineers, your manufacturing personnel have to interpret or visualize a flat drawing. And they're visualizing it as a 3D part. At times, interpreting these results uh, can result in a loss or misinterpretation of the original design intent. Now, this directly is going to lead to delays and rework. If you're, if the folks online are doing 2D now, how many times have you have ever been approached and, or sat there and watched someone look at your drawing and try to connect? Okay, this line goes with this line. Uh, you know, trying to get an understanding of what's actually happening here. Well, if you're using 3D, you actually have a 3D representation of the part. There's not a lot of misinterpretation that could go around with having that type of, of environment. And just to illustrate that, this is eDrawings from SolidWorks. eDrawings is a free viewer that will view, over, view your SolidWorks files, but will also view any of your existing AutoCAD or 2D data. So if you look at a drawing like this, the complexity of all the different nooks and crannies of this cast pump housing and and how long does it take for somebody to interpret your design intent you understand what you're trying to do how does it compare to when you go ahead and open that same pump housing inside of SolidWorks okay so you still have to understand the nooks and crannies. You still have a SOLIDWORKS drawing that's very similar to what you have today. But you can start to gain other things, like being able to perform cross-sections, You know, looking at this uh, from a particular viewpoint. For instance, your shop floor can go ahead and perform these types of functions. Maybe they one, then want to go ahead and do some measuring. They want to know some distances. Uh, between certain spots on the part. So your delta XYZs in particular areas. How many times have you created a drawing and you forgot a few dimensions? And what happens? Manufacturing has to come back and it's a back and forth. Well, the reality is it's all about that communication, that interpretation. With a 3D model, we live in that world, so the interpretation of a 3D model is a lot easier. So you're going to see productivity gains just by having a 3D model. Okay, Whether you can quantify that, put numbers to that, that's an important step in deciding to go with 3D in the first place. So that's my first challenge that you will resolve and, and assist with going with SOLIDWORKS. Now the next one <laughs> You know, when you when you create a drawing, let's say of an assembly in 2D, uh, using layouts uh, with subassembly interfaces and fit and tolerance between components and function of components, there's a a high level of risk to have fit and tolerance problems that go undetected till late in the cycle. And we've all seen the graph of, you know, if we detect the change early on in the cycle versus late in the cycle, the costs associated with that. So the key here is how, how do we understand fit and tolerance pro problems earlier in the cycle? Okay, with a 2D tool, you're doing a lot of checking. You're doing a lot of interpreting the fit and tolerance. You Maybe you're running some... Uh, math or calculations to, to do a tolerance stack up. 
well, a tool that I want to kind of introduce you to uh, called the Tal Analyst. The Tal Analyst in SOLIDWORKS is going to allow me to do tolerance stackups using the 3D model. Not using the 2D, using the 3D model. So what we want to do, uh, let's see, make sure I find my part. Let's go ahead and open it up. Okay. All right. So when you have a model like this and you want to do tolerance stackups of the model itself, now you're able to do this using a product called the Tall Analyst. Now the Tall Analyst allows me to take a look at how I've designed all the parts and get a good idea on how I can expect them to fit after I've manufactured them with the tolerance that I've placed on the actual models themselves. Okay, something you would typically have to do longhand. Here's a, here's a simple example of a fixture. I need to maintain a 100 millimeter distance because this is like a go or no go gauge or sliding parts in and out of here or it's holding parts, something to that effect. Well, I'm able to tell the system what the base is for my assembly, which parts I'm going to assemble after I place the base. I then help with the assembly steps. So what we're going to do in this case, we're going to slide, I'm working on the brown part here, we're going to slide the faces together and then we're going to line up one of the holes. For the holder, which is the final piece that we assemble, we're going to align first of all the back face. All right, then the second step is to align the bottom face, just so you're aware there's a little lip on here. So we want to align the bottom face and then we'll line up one of the holes. Now this software is able to go through and now analyze all the dimensions that we have within our model using root sum squares methods and tell you, okay, here's what can be expected, what the nominal min max values are going to be. On top of that, and this is the important part, which dimensional values are going to play the biggest role in you getting those results in making sure this works. So let's think about this. With a 2D tool, a lot of this is being done on paper. It's being done using prototypes. With SOLIDWORKS, you can go ahead and do this virtually before you ever cut any metal. Get an idea of what you're looking at. Okay? Product called Tal Analyst that works inside of SOLIDWORKS. So we can resolve this, these types of challenges by just having the 3D models as well. How about handling large, complex assemblies uh, with SOLIDWORKS as well? Handling large, complex assemblies, uh, it's tough in 2D to manage thousands of parts that are constantly changing as a design changes because you're not only uh, managing the design aspect, but all the various views. Did I change a line in this view versus that view? Or did I even create an isometric, an update? With SOLIDWORKS, everything is linked to the solid model, so you can focus on the design aspect of it. So you can manage numerous production level drawings, make it real easy to do so. So just to give you an idea here, let's uh, bounce to SOLIDWORKS for a moment open up a, a fairly decent size uh, SOLIDWORKS drawing. Everything in this drawing is based upon uh, an existing design. An assembly, a solid model that helped me to create the drawing. The system keeps track of what I have done as it relates to the solid model, therefore any change to the solid model is going to be reflected on the drawing. But it makes it real easy for me to also continue working, maybe open up sub-assemblies, take sub-assemblies from the upper level, make some drawings of these sub-assemblies from the upper level. 
software is going to automatically give me what different view types I have, allow me to create drawings. Everything is based on the solid model. And the software is able to handle these large assemblies and allow you to really focus on the 3D design and not necessarily the 2D drawing aspect. Now one part of overcoming this challenge is managing this data. Because as I talked about at the beginning, in the 2D world, you're managing not just the file, did I update the file, but I'm managing, did I update the isometric view? Did I update the top view, the right view? You're, you're managing really minute details uh, of the project as well. Well, that's where some of our other tools are also going to help. This is a little snapshot into our document management tool. Our document management tool is going to allow me to see an upper level assembly, see what drawings have already been created for that upper level assembly, see the structure that was built for that assembly. You can see that some of the drawings have already been created for some of the components within that assembly. How many versions of that assembly exist? How about something as simple as, you know what, here's a part. Where is it used? Okay, I don't have to think about lines changing this view, that view, and the other view. I have to think about if I change that part, I want to open up and make sure that drawing has also updated because it's automatic. So the challenge of really managing, it kind of shifts away from managing 2D lines and information that way to, to managing this overall assembly. Uh, but using some of the tools makes it very, very easy to do and perform. Continuing on, let's think about prototypes for a minute. Product development, if you're using a 2D CAD tool, you often rely on prototypes to visualize the performance of an assembly. So this is how your way of detecting whether parts collide or interfere or ensure that you have adequate clearances. The great thing about solid modeling is that it can be accomplished on the computer. Saving time, saving money, and think about the money you put into prototypes. What if we can build all these seats in SolidWorks in 3D to visualize, to look at collision, to look at fit, versus actually having to build uh, several prototypes just to decide on what is the best prototype. Let's go to SolidWorks here for a moment. I'm just going to close down some of these. So how do we visualize these types of things inside of SolidWorks? Well, here's a, an example, several hundred component assembly. Uh, this thing actually works. Uh, I need to uh, be able to go a full revolution on the gearing on this thing to make it work. To give you a, another idea here, we can mix and match 2D and 3D. So here's the same tool with 2D geometry showing how this thing works, how the gearing is going to drive that platen up and down. Well, we need to make sure this motion is going to physically work. So we put together maybe some combination of 2D and 3D. And we're able to tell the software, you know what, let's check if things collide between this component and this component. And I can go ahead and drive the geometry now and actually see when it collides. Okay, you can see the colors when I hit the two faces together. If my speakers were on, the scene's going to beep at me. If I go back the other way for a second, I can tell it to stop when it collides. I can see exactly how far around I make it. I can't go a full revolution on this. So what do I do? Well, I don't have to create a prototype, right? I'm in the 3D world. I can go ahead and modify my geometry in the 3D world. Let's go to this one here. Let's make that a little bit larger and go ahead and modify it right inside the assembly. Something that, think about how much time that might have taken if you were later on in the development cycle. Well, now I can go ahead and perform that same action. Tell the software I want to check between the two components, stop when they collide, and now if we 
we drag this thing around. You can see I can now get a full revolution out of the gearing without any contact. But maybe I'm worried about vibration between the components. I need to make sure I have adequate clearance. Well, I can go ahead and tell the software, let's check the clearance between this part and this part so I can see exactly what I have. So as I'm dragging it through, I'm able to see that I got a half millimeter clearance between the components when it's moving. Now, how do you do that with a 2D tool? You build prototypes. You spend money. Okay, it's a lot harder to do using a 2D tool. Okay, so another challenge that can be overcome uh, by using SolidWorks. Now you create drawings in 2D, you create drawings in SolidWorks, you follow standards, you use uh, methods and options in both products to, to create proper drawings. And then you may have a group within your organization that needs to check those drawings. They check to make sure you got the proper arrow styles, that you've formatted your tables and your title blocks and all the other things that you need to check address your fit and tolerance problems within a model. Make sure there's no errors uh, within any of it. With 2D, this process is, is very lengthy, very labor intensive, and if you find something, you gotta go back and forth. You know, if you find an error, it might affect all the views, or you gotta decide how many views are affected. The process of checking something takes a lot longer because everything's literally drawn in uh, as lines and arcs. So how do we expose some of this and help with some of this inside of SolidWorks? Inside of SolidWorks, we have tools that are going to help us to do this. We have a tool called the Design Checker. The Design Checker allows me to take an existing document, that pump housing, and I set up a standard on how I want it to look. And I can check the document against that standard. The software is going to tell me all of the issues to make sure it adheres to the standards that we set forth. Now it goes beyond uh, you know, just uh, arrow styles and so on. Spell checking, it does uh, geometry problems if there's problems with the solid model, but here's the nice thing, not only does it tell you, in this case my dimensioning standard, uh, we have an issue because the document's set to ISO and you need ANSI. Well, I can correct this just by hitting correct selected, and you can see that the drawing changes automatically. Okay, my arrow style, these are the, the default standards that my organization set up, and you're using different sizes, well, I can correct those to make my drawing look the way it needs to be. Or I could come in here and look at the spell checking. It may find different areas or different things. Look at aluminum, spelled wrong. I can go ahead and autocorrect to my spell checker. It actually highlights the area. I can tell it to just autocorrect my drawing. And I can move forward. Now think about that. Think about the times that it takes people to go through drawings uh, to get things checked, just to move it on in the process. Okay, SolidWorks has those tools to help you get there. Next one, creating instant drawings with SolidWorks. What I typically equate this portion with is not the initial drawing creation, uh, because you can almost, the first time through, you can probably create the solid model faster than the drawing views in some cases, but when a change comes down, it's easier to make the change in SolidWorks and have it update the drawings. But here's the difference. If you're using a 2D tool, chances are you're not putting all the, draw, all the views on a drawing you typically would to really convey the message. Are you putting isometrics or cutaway isometrics or section views and detailing all, all the section views that you need to to convey the message? Or are you leaving stuff out because you need to get the drawing out? Well, in SolidWorks, you focus on the 3D model and everything else comes along with that. So I'm going to show you a couple different things with this in SolidWorks. 
first of all, if I, if I take a, an assembly in this case that I've spent time on creating the drawing, or I'm sorry, creating the solid model, the drawings are automatic in this case. I just tell the software that I need to create a drawing from this particular model. It automatically extracts the views, top, front, right, isometric, any custom views that I have. And all I have to do is drag and drop them into my drawing to actually create the views. If I want an isometric, I'm not sitting there drawing lines and arcs and figuring out how that works. I go ahead and drop the isometric view in here. If I want multiple sheets, I can easily create a second sheet. And on that second sheet, maybe I want another view of that same model in isometric. Maybe it's going to be a little bit larger. We're going to use a custom scale. We'll go ahead and place that in here. Let's change it up a little bit. Let's go, let's go 2 to 1, see how big that's going to be. Well, maybe I also want to show that exploded. I want that thing exploded out so I can actually see all the components in my drawing. Maybe I want to switch it between hidden line visible, hidden removed. This is an all, all a byproduct of the solid model. I don't have to think about that anymore. Maybe we have a table that we want to put in here, like a, a build material table. I can go ahead and place that on the drawing. It's just reading information from the files. You know, item numbers, part numbers from the individual files. Maybe I got uh, some balloons I need to place on here. We'll go ahead and auto balloon this thing. I can go ahead and position my balloons within my drawing, and maybe there's one I got to move out of the way here. But everything is coming from the 3D model. Now think about this. You've just went ahead and created this isometric view because you wanted to show it exploded. Well, what would happen if you you know, somebody says to you, you know, that, that exploded view, it looks, I wish it could rotate just a little more so I could see it a little better. Well, in SOLIDWORKS, because everything's based upon the solid model, I can just select the view, rotate it where I want it, and accept it, and it's going to go ahead and keep that view updated to that. Now I may just have to move a few balloons to get them reorganized where I want them, and I can go ahead and move forward with my design. Very simple. Now what about, sometimes you'll hear criticism about, you know, designing in 3D doesn't give you all the, the data that you need for a 2D drawing. I'm going to show you something a little different here. It's going to be, I'm going to use some uh, simple parts to start with here. So. A lot of times the parts, when you design them in 3D, the dimensions that you use aren't exactly the dimensions you would use to detail the drawing itself. But SOLIDWORKS has a tool called the DIM Expert. The DIM Expert uses ANSI, the current ANSI standard, to give you the proper dimensions to manufacture this part. You provide it with a primary, a secondary, if you have a tertiary data within the part, you can tell it to go ahead and use plus minus tolerancing or geometric tolerancing and it's going to go ahead and provide all the dimensions needed for manufacturing. So all I have to do is position them where I want them. All my tolerance are there based upon the schemes I've set up. Let me go to top view here, make sure everything's where I want it. Now all I have to do from here is tell the software I'm ready to make a drawing of this. And when I go ahead and make a drawing, I can tell the software to bring those dimensions along with it. Bring everything I just created. And let's see, did I get it right? Bring my DIM expert annotations. It should have brought those in. I'm not sure why. But we can go ahead and actually physically bring those dimensions in as well automatically to the, the drawing. Throw it right on here, see if it'll. Okay. Okay. So bringing dimensions forward is very easy, but you have the dimensions that you need for manufacturing. You can be confident you haven't missed everything. The software is able to 
uh, help you to look at that to make sure that you have everything you are expecting to see uh, from a tolerance analysis. I can show the status to see if all the faces are green. If I delete one of these, you can kind of see uh, what that means. If I haven't uh, gotten a dimension that I need for 3D, it will show up. Okay, again, instant drawings is going to make it easy in SOLIDWORKS uh, to create those drawings because everything comes off the 3D. You're going to get isometrics. You're going to get section views. You're going to be able to put the drawing views on that you need to move forward. So that's often a challenge with the 2D world is you don't put too much in there because it's a lot to update. Quick, easy design changes. Uh, if I make a change to the part, it changes in the drawing. Now, it often gets said that uh, you know you can create the initial 2D drawing, and about the same time I can create the 3D model in the drawing. And in some cases, that is the same. But when it comes to making changes, almost always can you make the change quicker with SolidWorks than you can with AutoCAD or a 2D tool. Just for instance, just to go to show uh, a little bit of this, I have a drawing of a gantry frame, multiple views with an isometric, with a table. The table has all of the structural members that I've used. And now we decide we need to make some changes to this. Well, a couple changes will will change our spacing maybe on the ends here. And these are all done because on the 3D model. For those of you who haven't seen 3D before, it's done in the 3D world. Because there's a relationship uh, to the 2D drawing, it updates automatically. Now in this case, we're going to do something different. We need to add some new structural members. So we'll go ahead and uh, draw in where we're going to want these to be located. We want to add them between the existing members. And I can easily tell the software uh, to use a certain structural shape. In this case, a square tube. I can position the square tube very easily using the SOLIDWORKS tools. And then I can decide how I want to cut those two pieces. Let's add the other one in here. How I can cut those two pieces to the other members that exist. Okay, so for instance, I might want to cut this one so it sits flush there and flush there so we can weld it and then do the same thing on this one to the faces that it connects to. Now I've just added all that in there, but we have a drawing that's associated with this. We also have a cut list that tells me what sizes of the structural members I need for manufacturing and how many of those I need. Watch when I go to the drawing. Each view in that drawing has those structural members. If you look, item number 18 is the 2.5 by 2.5 by 18.75 that I just added, and there's 190 millimeters of it. The only thing I may have to do is come in here and add a balloon pointing out which one is item number 19. And item number 19, it knows now, is tied to the bill material. Okay, so those design changes, how long would it have taken you? Well, this is pretty prismatic geometry, maybe not long, but probably not that fast. Okay. Moving on, still working on some of these challenges that we have. How about configuring uh, derivative products and product families? This is a huge differentiator going to 3D. If you have products that are similar but different and product families, there really is no easy way other than having a table on a drawing in 2D to illustrate this. If you have multiple drawings to show each of the different family styles, uh, there's not an easy way to create that next family. You got to start a new drawing, and the time that it takes to do that, uh, it it does affect the cycle considerably. A lot of times, you have to redraw them from scratch. You have extra cost, more designers on the job. I mean, there's a lot that kind of goes in that. Now, in SolidWorks, we have what we call design tables. So I have a part designed, 
and I need a new version of that part. Well, very easily, I could go ahead and, using my tables, come in here and design the new part, just putting in parameters. Maybe my overall length's five and a quarter, overall diameter's four, O-ring width is going to be quarter inch, and we're going to not have the hole for connecting it at the end. And the software is able to read this in and create the new variation. That being said, I can go ahead and make a drawing of this very easily, just as we've been showing, as a variation of this particular design. Okay, everything's kind of a byproduct of it. If I decide to go back and make a new variation here, I can add a configuration and modify any of the parameters that I have. Maybe I want to change the slot depth to another value. Okay, and I'm able to go ahead and change that. And now I can go ahead and make a drawing of this one very simply. I can make another drawing if I like. Maybe we just want an isometric up here. Or what I can do is I can actually switch between configurations. I have another example to, to illustrate this for you. Okay, so design tables, family tables makes it very easy. Let's see. So let's take that concept to the assembly level. We have a table, which is nothing more than Excel, that says here's the bore, here's the tube size, here's the rod size, you know, here's the uh, stroke length, and it reads in that information into the software, and it creates multiple variations of the cylinder in a single file. Well, what does that do to the drawing end? Well, we have a drawing of this with multiple views. And what I can do within this drawing is I can actually go to any of these views and actually swap out the version that it's using. So I don't have to create another drawing. I swap it out. I want to see the 1.125 1, 1 by 2-inch stroke. And I can modify it. Now save this as a drawing. Or I can change this to any of the other variations of the design. I don't have to recreate drawings for the multiple variations. Okay. So creating family tables or derivative products and product families in SolidWorks uh, will be a lot easier when you get to the 3D tools. Now how about reusing CAD data downstream? Now this conversation could go on for hours. With a 2D tool, there's not as many opportunities to utilize that data downstream. Manufacturing a lot of times uses 2D, right? But what about all the other areas of the business? Collaboration with customers, technical publications, training, process planning, inspection. All those areas within the business can take advantage of 3D, all of them. I'm going to show you one example in SOLIDWORKS where we can take advantage of the 3D model. There's a tool in SOLIDWORKS called costing. And costing allows you to get accurate quoting on the parts. Maybe you've designed the sheet metal part, you need to send it to manufacturing, or, or you're a uh, job shop and they've sent you this part. We can use this tool to analyze how much it will cost me to manufacture this, excuse me, so I can get accurate quoting. I can tell it the material, the thickness. I, it automatically understands material cost and the size. I can even give discounts for quantities and lot sizes. I can add secondary operations. I can add maybe a painting operation, and I know that, that paint's going to cost me uh, 30 bucks. 30 bucks in setup, another 20 bucks to actually uh, shoot the parts with paint. I can add that to the cost. And then what I can do is set that as a baseline and have the software help me determine how to cut costs. Your customers want to know, you know, how to cut costs on their parts. Well, what if I made it from a thinner material? Okay. What if I made it from uh, aluminum alloy to uh, you know, a titanium alloy, how does that affect? I can pick my parts. 
So I can clearly see uh, titanium, we're going up $257. But the message here is simple. Having a solid model is going to affect you in many areas of the business, not just in engineering. The rest of the organization is going to want to get their hands on this, these items to be able to do things with it. Now, if you're currently using 2D CAD, what do you do for analysis? Well, the problem with today's analysis, a majority of them need some sort of 3D data to run analysis. When I'm talking analysis, I'm talking a FEA or, or testing virtually of components versus creating physical prototypes that we talked about earlier. Okay, you would, organizations have to create 3D models just to even outsource this type of thing. Well, obviously, if you're using SOLIDWORKS, you have the 3D model. You can go ahead and do your analysis real time. Now, when I say real time, we're talking about tools that we consider to be design analysis. So if I take a part like this, and I'm a designer, I'm coming up with my concepts of different uh, bolted braces that I'm trying to design, and I have different ways that I can design this thing. But which one is better? Well, in the 2D world, you can, again, run some long math. You can create some prototypes. You can physically test it. But what about virtually testing it? Well, maybe my first design looked like this. And what I'm able to get from that first design by testing it using simulation is to see how that compares to the yield stress of the material. Okay, I got 15,000 newton meters squared based upon the physical testing. I can see how much displacement I should affect, two-tenths of a millimeter by applying a particular force. I can animate this and really clearly see what's going to happen, how it's going to bend. But here's where it comes in as a design tool. Now I can look at different things within my design. Well, what if I did it this way? Well, how's that affect my stress? Well, the stress is lower than it was before. My displacement on my model is you know, you know, still even lower. So this design is already better than the other design. Okay, I can do that all virtually because I have 3D models. Now, another example. What if the software could literally think for you? I have a part that I have loads on. For instance, uh, let's see here. Let's run this one for a second. See. I'm just going to set it up as if it was physically going to be tested. Oh, let's see. There we go. And actually run to get some results. But once you get these results, you you want to start to make design changes, right? So I look at this. And I say, you know, based upon these results, uh, you know, here's my stress within the part. Maybe I want to uh, see if it can handle, in this case, 20,000 pounds of force. I can go ahead and do that and run that iteration to see, you know, what my results are going to be based upon that. Let me just change this so we can view this in PSI to get an idea of what we're looking at. Okay, I thought I changed it. Let's go. All right, so we're looking at about 11,000 PSI based upon the stress. But like I said, what if it could think for you? What if you can run an optimization study and tell the software, I want to vary this rib thickness? Well, my rib thickness can get down to this minimum thickness, but can't be a maximum of that. But I need to make sure that I stay under 12,000 PSI, my max stress. And I can tell the software to go ahead and run. And the software is going to go ahead and go through and look at different thicknesses for that rib. It's going to tell me, you notice the pink section, when I'm over my value. Okay, It creates multiple studies here. 
and then it's going to tell me my optimal. It says right here, if I'm 0.16 inches, I'll be at 11,000 PSI. And now I've just saved material. I've saved prototyping time. Okay, we've optimized our design virtually using 3D modeling. This one, I just want to have a brief discussion. We, you know, we talk about manufacturing, and traditionally, a lot of manufacturing uses 2D information. But if you have CNC equipment, and uh, you you want to be able to take a 3D model, run your tool pass on that 3D model, there's a lot of tools to be able to cut metal with 3D solid modeling pass. Excuse me, if you're doing rapid prototyping. We can use the 3D solid model to communicate directly with rapid prototyping equipment to print out virtual prototypes so your customer can hold it, so you can hold it to understand what it's going to feel like, what it's going to look like, other than having the 3D model. And we can communicate just in 2D like you're currently doing. We can save out flat patterns of sheet metal for nesting and for uh, you know manufacturing or sending to the laser. Okay, those challenges uh, get better even with the 3D, better communication, but you can still meet the demands of any current systems that need 2D information. And the last challenge I want to talk about is how we can take this 3D data and improve our support for documentation, publication, and marketing processes. Currently, if you're using a 2D tool, sometimes you can use the 2D data on documentation, but it only goes so far. Well, with the 3D model, we can go a lot further with documentation. We can take it throughout the organization, and if the design changes, we can have it update within our documentation. Here's an example of a word drawing that has images taken directly from a 3D solid model. Those images are coming from a product in the SOLIDWORKS family called Composer. What you do is you open up the solid model inside a Composer, and you create images that you want to use for your documentation. For instance, I may want to show an exploded view with these four bolts off the top surface. I may want to pull the uh, cover off for a moment. And maybe I want that to be not necessarily in a colored mode. I want that to be in a silhouette mode. I want the background to be white. I then want to start uh, putting uh, labels on here to label the different items that we're working with, to give part numbers so whatever the documentation is using, it's understandable to the end user. And all I do is capture that image and you can see some of the images that I've already created that are part of that documentation these are all captured in this tool and the great thing is if the solid model ever changes all you have to do is perform an update of this document and now you can very easily re-export all your images as JPEGs, bitmap, TIFFs, or PNGs, and that those updates will automatically show up in here. So we're bridging that gap once again, getting you through that entire cycle and helping you with documentation, create different and better types of documentation, create web pages and interactive environments using these tools as well. Now I just went through 12 challenges that are known to have better results using 3D tools. Now the level in which the results is really going to depend on some things within your organization, the types of products and so on, but it is clear that in those 12 areas you can clearly have an impact by having 3D modeling. But we have to have a plan. We have to have a plan going forward on how to get from the 2D world to the 3D world. Okay, it has to be clear, has to be concise, and you have to have the backing of your organization. Here are the five things uh, that I've seen that you really want to do up front to help you be successful in this transition. 
First and foremost, make sure your hardware is adequate for 3D modeling. Some 2D organizations are really lagging behind in the power from their, their engineering tools. Keep in mind that those systems, you, you treat them as money makers. You know, you, you, you keep them up to date, you keep them with the latest stuff, you, you give them the power because that's going to help with the speed on, on all these uh, engineers' desktops. You want to find an internal expert. Find out which guy in your organization wants to use 3D, wants to be good with it, can take the initiative to, to go to things like user groups in the forums and to learn extra. Okay, find that expert. That's important for people making this transition. Take a look at your process and, and come up with standards. Right off the bat, when I say standards, I just think templates. Reusable templates that have things set up so that out of the box they can already start creating drawings. On top of that, capture these best practices in documentation, saying this is how we're going to do things going forward. And then, I can't stress this enough, establish a formal training program. Okay? Don't expect people that have been using 2D to just start running with the software. If you give them a formal training program, they will. Okay? Set up a plan to start with essentials. Get into the advanced assembly over the year. Get through all the classes so you can have the fastest users in 3D. And you're going to blow what you can do in 2D out of the water. We know that. It's proven. We've got hundreds of thousands of users that are doing it daily. Okay, so in summary, you know, use SolidWorks using 3D will resolve these product development challenges. 56% of you said you need to shorten your product development cycle. Well, if I can virtually test, does that shorten my cycle? If I can make those design decisions as I'm adding those, if I change the fillet size or add a rib, if I know its effects already, I've shortened that cycle. How about increased quality and reliability? 67% that's said that's what you want. Well, if I can visualize that and make those changes, I can test for quality and reliability. I can test the forces on it. Product complexity. When you're, when you're dealing with a 2D tool, you're kind of you're stagnant in, in the kinds of things that you can do you don't get as creative. 3D Modeler allows you to bring out the creativeness in your design team. Hey, what if we did it this way? And you can, you can test it and see it real time. Obviously, 3D is going to help you uh, with the mandate from your customers, you know, getting, uh, getting 3D models into their hands. Now, some other reading uh, as we close today. A lot of what I had... Uh, information wise other than the customers that we've serviced over the years uh, is coming from a uh, a document from the Aberdeen group this is a third party that just looked at best practices for migrating from 2d to 3d you can uh, google this it's uh, it's good reading it talks about the challenges it talks about the benefits it tells you one statistic that that 3d CAD company 3d companies are 21% uh, higher revenues based upon the, than 2D because they've reduced the, a lot of those costs in the product development cycle. It talks about the challenges and how to overcome them and what to be expected. So again, Google this. I think it's a great tool. Um, I, it doesn't look like I have any other questions. So I think we'll, uh, we'll wrap it up with that. If you have any questions, Go ahead and put them into the uh, question section. But I hope you at least enjoyed a, a good overview of what SolidWorks is going to be able to help you do if you make that decision to go forward. I guess before you jump off here, um, if you do want to be contacted uh, by anyone about any of the tools that we've just shown today or about making the next steps to 2D, um, go ahead and put yes in there and uh, we'll make sure somebody gets right back to you uh, about these tools and uh, 
know, some, some sort of process or transition from here.